An agreement on a bonding bill has been reached, and joining me now to talk a little bit about it, we have Chair of the Capital Investment Committee, Senator Leroy Stump. Thanks for joining us, Senator. You're welcome. It's nice to be here. Let's begin with this agreement and how you're feeling about what's in the bill and what isn't in the bill. Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> the, to uh, a big man. Well, thank you. The, uh, the agreement is uh, one that we worked out <clears throat> in conjunction with the governor's office and uh, as well as uh, Republicans in both House and Senate. And uh, even though we may not have total 100% um, agreement on, from the part of all, on the part of all legislators, I think we have uh, covered uh, a good base of, of uh, legislators across the state. And one of the things that we tried very hard on the Senate side is to look at um, the uh, uh, kind of the, ba the core needs of our state. Uh, we had zeroed in on the Senate side, and, and a lot of these things are in that, that agreement. Housing. We, we saw from last September in our tour around the state that the, the need of many, many communities all over the state for housing, additional housing, was very high. Uh, we have in that agreement $100 million, actually it's $106 million if you count the uh, Dorothy Day Center, and uh, that is the highest amount of money that we have uh, allocated toward ho housing ever in a, a Minnesota bonding bill. Um, the, another area that was very important was the higher education. When we went around and visited our college campuses and and talk to employers and talk to uh, instructors, we found that there is a huge need for trained employees across the state of Minnesota. And so we tried very hard in the bonding bill to adequately uh, put resources into uh, the uh, higher education system so that they can change the programs, uh, uh, identify those areas where they want to increase uh, program uh, capacity, such as uh, a lot of the trades like welding and, and uh, uh, a lot of the technician type programs that are highly, those students are highly sought after. Um, we also uh, work closely with the governor in economic development and uh, the infrastructure needed for the economic development, such as you, you have uh, uh, adequate transportation uh, uh, for for a company to come in, and, and such as the, the uh, old Army, Army ammunition uh, site uh, north of uh, St. Paul. Uh, we also had um, uh, tried to identify those kinds of projects that would give uh, a, a boost to, to uh, employers. So, Senator, was there a position that the Senate had hoped for a project that ended up being removed from the bill? Something well, I, that you consider a priority. Well, certainly, I th I think um, we uh, fell uh, a little bit short on funding for the Dorothy Day Center, um, and uh, I've talked to them. Uh, they had requested uh, uh, starting out 15 million dollars, and this is really to try to address the the large number of homeless people that aren't really residents of St. Paul, but are, are really come from all over the state and even outside the state. So we we ended up uh, funding that project at six million, and so uh, uh, it's going to take um, a lot of uh, ingenuity and, and creativity, as well as probably some additional funding from wherever to uh, make that project work. My last question for you is Representative Hausman made no bones about the fact that she thought 846 was too low. Were you okay with that number or did you think the bonding bill should have been higher? Well, we really didn't have a choice in that because that was a, a number that was basically uh, kind of the size of the box that was given to us and we had to work within that box. And I think um, uh, that probably was the first time a bonding committee really ever had that type of an approach. Um, usually there's a little bit of a leeway, a give, and uh, apart from the 846, we did have some cash, 200 million in cash, but uh, it's still, when you look at the, the backlog of projects and you look at the size of those projects, such as the convention centers across the state, and uh, the, the tremendous back, um, uh, need for our state institutions, such as 
the security hospital and the, and the corrections uh, facilities that have been left unfixed for a long, long, long time. Those projects really took, and the capital too, I can't uh, forget to mention that. That's a very, very large project. So in a sense, what this bonding bill does is kind of push off, take care of a lot of those projects and it opens the door for uh, in, a, in two years for uh, kind of a fresh start. And you mentioned in two years, however, traditionally, lately anyway, there's been a bonding bill every year. Do you foresee one next year? Uh, yes, I think uh, that's, that's correct. Uh, usually there's a, a number of, of areas that uh, can be addressed and uh, one that comes to mind personally is the flood mitigation. Uh, you never know. Uh, all it takes is, a, is a, uh, an incident where you have a disaster and, and you really realize that uh, the, the importance of trying to take care of the, uh, the, you know, those communities that protect those communities that are flooding. Okay, Senator Lee Rice-Tump, thank you for your time. Thank you very much.